Hey, it's Rick Barker, host of the Music Industry Blueprint Podcast, former manager of this young lady, Taylor Swift, and was blessed to spend a couple years as the social media mentor for the American Idol contestants. And at the recording of this video, uh, Taylor's Netflix documentary, Miss Americana, has just come out. And of course, my DMs light up. Rick, have you watched it? What do you think about it? What is it? You know, it's like, and my daughter was like, Dad, I saw your head. <laughs> you know, one of the scenes where we're rushing her through a crowd and it was cool because they pieced a lot of it together. And one of the things that I really loved about this is one, just first and foremost, is I am a fan of her as a person. I had the pleasure of being with her at the beginning stages of her career. For those of you that only know Taylor and her pop world, and you're like, who the heck is this guy claiming to have any association with Taylor whatsoever? Uh, go to Google and just type in Rick Barker and Taylor Swift. You'll get all the information that you need to know. But what is interesting about Taylor is Taylor is not afraid to direct the negativity head on. A lot of people are scared. A lot of people, all you see out there in the world is what's perfect. And she really addressed that in this. And then a lot of people were coming out going, you know, she's just doing this for publicity stunts and she's using, doing this because she wants it to be on social media. And she's doing this because, 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 because. And what I'm here to tell you today, she's been doing that her whole time that I was ever with her before there was any social media, before there was any paparazzi, before anyone knew who she was. I wanted to share a couple stories with you. Uh, this is probably before you knew who Taylor Swift was, the, the fans that remember her from her country career. But let me tell you about the work ethic that this young lady had. Polestar did a story uh, and they asked her, you know, why is it that you chose Rick to be your manager? He had no experience. And she said something and the quote was, I told him I wanted a gold record. He said, let's go out and meet 500,000 people. And it stuck. And that's kind of what she did. You see, when we started, we had this little social platform called MySpace. And our very first friend was Tom. Some of you might remember Tom. Tom was our very first friend. So Taylor would go on every night and she would get to know these fans. This wasn't something that she was doing for a publicity stunt. She cared and still to this day cares about her fans. So she would go in and find out what was going on in their lives and she would write stories that changed their lives. When Facebook came about, we didn't even have the ability to get on Facebook because neither one of us were a students, but thank goodness that her fiddle player, Emily, went to Belmont. So we used Emily's Facebook page to start talking to the fans. I remember a story one night, uh, someone, Emily's like, oh my gosh, Rick, this dude's like bashing you on Facebook. And I'm like, what's Facebook? And she goes, oh no, it's this college thing. And I look and all of a sudden it was a picture of me with my arm out and I wish I could find this picture somewhere because it would pop up right now if I could, but we don't. There's a picture of me with my arm out and it said, Taylor's fat A manager keeping us from getting autographs. And I'm like, okay, how do I get a hold of this guy? I, I got to talk to this kid. And Emily's like, uh, well, you can't because you don't have a Facebook page. I said, well, let me use your Facebook page. And I typed this kid and his name was Matt. And I said, hey, Matt, this is Rick, Taylor's fat A manager. Uh, I want to have a talk with you. What's your phone number? Nothing. Nothing really happened. So I go, well, here's my phone number. Call me. Next thing you know, phone rings. Bling. I guess that's the best phone sound I can make. I'm like, hey, this is Rick. He goes, hi, Rick. This is Matt. I said, Matt, let me explain something to you real quick. I said, unfortunately, we're getting to a point where if we piss off more people than we can help, we're having to make decisions on whether we can even bring Taylor out right now. So at this particular event, you were there, I walked out and I said, guys, here's the deal. I can either walk her around the back where none of you get a chance to see her, or if you promise me to not try to stick something out to get her to autograph it, because she will stop and she will autograph everything and we will be late to getting to this next city. If you promise, I'll let you take as many pictures as you want. Let me walk her through. And all of you, all of you agree. Yes, Rick, just bring her out. We'll, we'll behave. We'll do all this stuff. So I said, great. I walk her out. First thing that happens, somebody reaches over and tries to hand her something and I go to block it. I said, Matt, I said, I would rather her be able to come out and you guys be able to see her than this. After that conversation, 
he wrote in Facebook, or at the time I called it the Facebook, Taylor's manager is like the coolest guy ever. You know, we all need to support her and support this and the whole thing. And all of a sudden the light bulb went off for me. It's like, wow, when we can get direct to the fan and we can have those kind of conversations and kind of let them in behind the curtain, that changes all the difference in the world. So Taylor started doing these after show meet and greets. These things would last three, three and a half hours. 99% of the meet and greet she did. If you have a picture from the early days, like holding the CMT award or in one of those meet and greets, there's a real good chance that I took that picture. There's a real good chance if you have a t-shirt that you got autographed, it was either Jason or myself where we were leaning over and she was autographing them on our back. That was her. She had the choice, just like every artist, to stay back on the bus and hang out with everybody and talk about the show, but instead she wanted to spend as much time with the fans. There was no paparazzi. There was no ulterior motive. All she wanted to do was love on these people. And guess what? Every time she put out a record, guess who sold more than anyone? Taylor. Taylor said something to me one time. She, she, had, she had lost an award uh, and she said to me, she said, you know, we're sitting on the bus and she's like, Rick, what is the award based off sales? I said, it's the Billboard Award. She goes, then I want to win a Billboard Award. I want to go and I want to outsell. I want to love on these fans so much, be able to outsell everyone. She went out that year. She outsold everyone. That was a year that the billboards <laughs> took off. And she was like, holy crap, what do I do now? But all the fan voted awards, all the sales driven awards, she was so focused on doing that. But she isn't just so into the sales and everything like this. Yeah, that means a lot for a creative trying to put this stuff together. But the last story that I want to share with you, and then I encourage all of you to go watch the documentary if you haven't. It was very well done. We were in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I think we were on the Brad Paisley tour at the time. Matter of fact, we were on the Brad Paisley tour uh, because uh, Taylor, her mom, and I had gone to a, a craft store, like a Halloween store. It was right around Halloween. And we got rear-ended on the freeway coming back or the highway, whatever they call it. So yes, I do remember now. We were on the Brad Paisley tour and it was cold and it was kind of snow raining a little bit. And if you've ever been to a concert, the buses usually park back behind the venues and sometimes there's a gate and people will stand outside the gate so that they can you know, get a glimpse of their favorite celebrity. Uh, Taylor looked out and there was this family. It was this dad, the wife and three kids and all the kids were wearing Taylor shirts and they were little kids. So these shirts were like bigger than them. So they look like shirt dresses and they're holding up a sign. And Taylor was like, go get them. I'll bring them on the bus. I want to meet them. Her idea. So I go out, I bring the family up on the bus and the kids are telling stories and she's taking pictures and she's doing all this stuff. And she says to me, she says, look, go back in my purse and grab a couple hundred bucks. So I go back to her purse, grab a couple hundred bucks. And after all the kids are done and the family's ready to go out, you know, that's a lot for a family of five to get five tickets to the show for these kids, you know, $30 t-shirts and the time that they were spending in the cold trying to get Taylor's attention. And as the kids went off the bus, she asked the dad to come back. And the dad came back on the bus and away from the kids, away from the thing, she gave him a hug and she reached out in his hand and she handed him the money. She said, listen, thank you so much for supporting me and my career. She didn't want it to be done in front of the kids. She didn't want to try to make herself look good in front of the kids. She did that because that's the kind of person that she is. And I may get in trouble for telling that story, but you know what? I don't care because I think that sometimes the world needs to know what the world needs to know to kind of get over. If more people spent the time, especially musicians, you know, if you spent the time worrying about the consumer, more than you worry about your label or who, who thinks you're the man or the woman or whatever it is right now, then whenever you put out a record, you might sell a million. Think of it this way. She'll sell a million CDs to people that don't even have CD players. Okay, that's because of the relationship. That's because of what it is that she does. You don't have to agree with everything that she does. I don't agree with everything anyone does. But the fact that people are saying that this is all done for publicity, Guys and gals, she's been doing this for a long time. Why? Because that's the kind of person that she is. She makes the music for her fans. Everything she does is for her fans. Is some of it calculated? All of us have calculated things, but everything is about the fans. So once again, if you haven't had a chance to watch uh, the documentary, go ahead and check it out. 
Uh, if you'd like to know more about me, maybe you're an artist and you want to learn how to re really utilize the tools to build relationships and not just try to sell people stuff and you know become that slimy artist, why don't you head over to socialmediaformusic.com. I've got a free presentation that I would love to teach you how to be able to sell more tickets to your shows, how to get more people uh, buying your merch, how to get more streams on the streaming platforms, how to really make yourself look professional so when people find you, they go, okay, I want to I wanna check that out. All right, it's been a pleasure uh, with you on this video today. I know it's a little different than the ones that I normally do, but thanks for allowing me a chance to walk down memory lane. Once again, if you want to know more about Taylor and I, you can go to google.com and type in Rick Barker, Taylor Swift. You guys have a great one. And uh, if I do end up getting sued for sharing this information, I'm going to use it to build my credibility too. It's like, I got the stories that people want to sue me over. No, just kidding. Love you guys. Be good. Ciao.